Today we're doing a sit down and relax in our bed review of The Sparrow by Mary Doria Russell. In five years I've waited for this moment where I would read a book that would enter like my top five books ever read. Ever since I read To Like Lightning by Ada Palmer, which is my favorite book ever, still number one. Week after I read The Sparrow, The Sparrow took over my number one spot. And then I was like thinking about it, I was like, okay, it's not number one, but it is in the top five. So I have to speak about it. I have to talk about it. I'll keep it as vague as possible while still giving some details as to what the book is about and the feel of the book so you know if you like it. The reason I read The Sparrow was because it was pitched to me uh, well, not to me specifically, but another booktube channel described it as a science fiction, a little life. And I was like, a little life that is science fiction? I love science fiction, I love fantasy, I love these types of genres, and I love a little life. And now we have a mashup of that in The Sparrow. So I picked it up. Now, this is a science fiction. It is a science fiction that follows two timelines. One timeline is in the future, which uh, is the timeline we start with. We meet Emilio Santos, our main character, and he's returned from the exploration of this other planet. This book is about the first contact with aliens. We uncover this other planet and uh, we send a Jesuit party um, with along with some scientists to go to that planet. And then we meet Emilio Santos in 2060, year uh, 2060, he's returned to the home planet, to Earth, and he is a broken man on the verge of death. His hands are destroyed, he is scarred and abused, and he is taken by the Jesuits to recover him, to make him better, right? Heal him, but most importantly, to find out what happened on that goddamn planet. The planet they were sent to um, it was a whole group, right? And Emilio returned, he's the only survivor, and everyone wants to know what happened. The planet is 17 light years away, so, you know, there's a lot of waiting till you go there and come back. Emilio and the group left in 2019, and so we are following the timeline of 2060 as he's recovering and slowly divulging the details of the mission, and we're following 2019 as the group and many characters find out about the aliens and um, decide to go to that planet. In 2019, we follow Emilio, we find out more about him, what type of person he is. He's a genius, he's a linguist, he's a Jesuit, he's a kind person, a wonderful character to follow around. By far my favorite character out of all of the books and one of my favorite characters in all of fiction. Now, we have many characters. The writing style, the narration style is more ominiscent, but not at the expense of our feeling connected with the characters. We still feel deep into their souls, but within one scene you could see the emotions of many characters, but it's never confusing. So in 2019 we meet the whole group. We meet Emilio as well as Sofia, another great, great character. She's also a genius. She autom automates processes. You can explain anything to her basically and she will make like an AI that could do it like you do or even better. So we meet Annie, who is an older woman, a very quirky character, a very smart character. Her husband, I think his name is George, I kind of forgot, but he's also very smart and he's also joining the mission. Um, we have Jimmy, who is a physicist. The highlight of this science fiction is that science is not at the forefront. Characters and their relationships at, are at the forefront. They're deep yarnings and traumas are at the forefront. The dialogues, the humor, as well as the tragedy in the humor, are so well done. Mary Doria Russell knows how to narrate a story, so you have all of the important context in every scene, so it makes the biggest emotional punch at any given moment, and I love how she plays with emotions. This book is a dark book, I will say that. No matter the humor, which is just such a relief from dark themes, I think the balance is wonderful, but in its core it's a dark book. Especially when we're following the 2060 timeline, Emilio's wounds are really deep. At the beginning he doesn't even want to talk, you know. We see his 
process of trying to heal, not wanting to heal, like dealing with loss and everything that was done to him. Mm. Now you may be wondering, why is this a science fiction, a little life? And it's because it's all about Emilio and the 2019 timeline is kind of like Jude's timeline when he's like describing his past. It's not that voyeuristic, it's not that... Um, violent. It's more um, subdued, but this also has to do with abuse as well as um, death and uh, healing. We get to see the group, the Jesuit party, arrive to the planet. And now, because we have scientists and Jesuits, this book, at its core, I think, to me at least, read as such a um, theological musing on the not just existence of God, but the betrayal of religion. This was to me the most relatable part of it by far, since I also remember I remember exactly the moment when I felt betrayed by religion. I was a religious person before. Currently, for the past like a year or so, I've been kind of thinking of of the religion. I've been kind of returning to it, not just the Catholic church not the church but more of the the spiritual side of it um i've been um dealing a lot with buddhism because of my graduate thesis and uh, i've been thinking about of course the, uh, christianity and god and reading this book and uh, that discusses this betrayal by religion by god it just gave me this insight that it's not the um, God that I felt betrayed by, but the church, you know, the physical aspect of the religion. And I think it's very, very important to um, part those two things when um, in our belief. Well, at least to me, it's important to, to recognize that it's not the God that I felt betrayed by, but, but the pe people, right? the people. This is the part that I felt most connected to and it's a part that kind of envelops the book, the, the theme that is most prominent and that kind of connects the whole book, the threads we, we see, the, the philosophies, the discussions in the book. is It's about God. Author herself, Russell, said that she also was a believer, she stopped believing and then she kind of started to find God again once she had a child and that's why she wrote the book and since she's also a, a doctor of anthropology, she's a scientist as well, this book is a very uh, nicely balanced uh, discussion about religion and science and belief, non-belief. Not everyone believes in the book. Uh, it's a very careful consideration of all of the sides and I really liked that. I really loved this theological part. I, I, I adore books that talk about God and religion and theology. This has done this so perfectly. I think people who like A Little Life will like The Sparrow. People who like science fiction, I think they will also like The Sparrow. All this, The Sparrow is very literary uh, and in a way it's much more about the people than the science. It's much more about the fiction part of it than the science part of it. However, I will say that it is extremely smart, extremely witty and intelligent. Once we get to that planet, the detail that Russell spared for society, for the structure of this alien uh, politics and economy, at the heart of it, the thing that drives the plot forward is what happened to Emilio, how we got to that point, you know? We, somewhere in the middle, kind of really get the picture of what happened, and then this question of how it got to that point is driving us forward again. One of the things that I loved, loved about the book was also this yarning once Emilio starts to like Sofia, and he's like a celibate, right? He's a Jesuit. And he deals with his love for God and his love for this woman. It was a wonderfully done book. Now, Children of God is the other book in this duology, which is kind of sequel, kind of not. Honestly, I read it right after The Sparrow, The Sparrow just blew me away. I became obsessed with it. And I read Children of God right after it. And I kind of read it more as a as a proposition of what could have happened next, more of an explanation, exploration of some themes started in the spiral, but to me not it did not really feel like a canon 
continuation, although the, Russell herself wrote it. It felt more like a, if you really like the Sparrow, go read Children of God. You know, if you're obsessed, if you don't know what to do next, go read Children of God. I agree, uh, but it's not like, it does not read like a duology to me. I think these two books are fairly different and I kind of think of them as different books. In the Children of God, I think the thing that I did not, I liked it less than the Sparrow. The Sparrow is like five stars, great. Children of God is five stars, not as good, but still great. What I did not like is the fact that Emilio wasn't as main as he was in the first book. I adored, though, the descriptions on the planet, on the foreign planet, the planet of the singers. I loved how we finally get more of the aliens, their rationalizations, their structures, social disorder that came to be after the humans arrived on the planet, right? Everything was so smartly done. Russell reversed everything. In this in the Sparrow, we have one view of the aliens, this kind of um, black and white almost uh, thinking with regards to some of the actions and what happened in the Sparrow. In Children of God, Russell manages to reverse everything. Everything you thought was true, she just destroys it. And she makes these wonderful explanations and you're just swept away by everything. If you really, really adored The Sparrow, I think you should read Children of God. If you felt The Sparrow was a complete story and you aren't really sure about Children of God, I'd say don't bother. Like, the writing is still there. She writes perfect prose. The narration, even better. My mom described her writing style as every sentence being quotable. I totally agree. It could be like a life quote on some t-shirt or whatever. The way she narrates, I already said, is more omniscient, but she lets you into the heart and soul of every character and you feel immediately connected. She has this uncanny ability to immediately grasp onto the main points of a person, what makes a person this type of person, and she explores it in its depth. So uh, as concluding remarks, I would say that The Sparrow is one of the best books in general that I've ever read. Science fiction, anthropology, first contact with aliens, trauma, Emilio Santos, which is one of the most wonderful characters, wonderful, wonderful characters that will not leave you alone ever. A group, a wonderful group of people, all intelligent. I think my eyes moistened, I'm not sure, I don't think I've cried, but like I, read, I really felt satisfied by, by reading it and I was like, um, made my whole family read it as well. If you have read The Sparrow and you need more science fiction, especially these uh, philosophical slash theological discussions uh, within science, uh, the first book that I want to mention is To Like Lightning by Ada Palmer, which is my favorite book, so it's not like I'm just recommending it out of the blue or whatever, it is my favorite book. I want to recommend it because it deals with theology and philosophy as well as um, trauma and abuse and sexuality and gender and I think this is a four books, right? But I think it's very intelligent and if you like The Sparrow because of its uh, discussions, because of its philosophy, because of its general um, theme of the betrayal of religion, I think you will love uh, to like Lightning by Ada Palmer. And the next one is Piranesi by Susan Clark. Again, we have this guy who is in this maze of Greek classical sculptures. We don't know why he's there. He's kind of trapped there. In the end, when it's revealed, it's like a huge heartbreak. It's a short story. I think if you like The Sparrow for its um, kind of a rounded story in the beginning, you don't know what's happening and slowly we get to this revelation, to this answer. I think you will like Piranesi as well because it, it, it is that type of story where you just don't know what's happening, you have a feeling that it's something bad and in the end you, it, it's revealed and it's really sad. So Piranesi by Suzanne Clarke. And lastly, a classic sci-fi Childhood's End by Arthur C. Clarke. It's about first contact with aliens. If you like the type of thing, Childhood's End is, I think, the perfect example. Besides which, you have a lot of intelligent dialogues without, uh, between a lot of intelligent people. Again, if you like the aliens and the portrayal of aliens, the, how different they are from your typical aliens in science fiction books, uh, in The Sparrow, I think you will love Childhood's End, where there's also a huge secret, secret be behind the aliens that visit 
the earth so childhood's end by arthur c clark that's all i have to say about the sparrow read it love it and um comment what you thought about it if you have read it uh, thank you and i'll see you in my next video